Well, I think what they need to do is continue a trend that really started back in the 80s. Uh, <clears throat> up until the 80s, uh, the defense industry would be on the cutting edge, and then you'd have uh, spin-offs into the, you know, the commercial sector, like the, the internet, for example, or the jet, uh, jet, jet aircraft. But the Pentagon, basically the bureaucracy became so slow and cumbersome, and the commercial sector began to advance so much more rapidly that you had basically spin on. In the first Gulf War, for example, um, Mothers and fathers and husbands and wives were going down and buying GPS from Radio Shack and shifting it over to the kids there because the Pentagon, you know, was, it was taking so long to, uh, you know, to develop that. And so I think you're going to see that in things like robotics, for example, that, the, you know, the commercial sector is moving much more rapidly and the Pentagon will be able to, 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 to use that. Um, you know, if you take a look at they're trying to develop a, a system for the soldiers in the field to be able to communicate, and they've gone on and on, and, and, the, and the soldiers you don't like it. They can go, and we find now, you know, you can get this right from the commercial sector, and it works much, uh, you know, much better. I, I think there, is a, there has to be a recognition that more and more um, of the supply chain side of our defense industry is a global ecosystem. So in, in terms of advanced technologies or advanced capabilities, the subset of technologies are required to produce a capability. Not all of them will be domestically produced. And in fact, some of the best technologies will not be. And it's a question of how can you open up what we're doing to more pairing between international firms or global firms and domestically um, grown firms.